Here's a video extending the thought of why this tertiary alkyl halide is the major product and really thinking about the reaction diagram associated with this reaction. So if we plot Gibbs free energy against a reaction coordinate describing the course of this reaction, we might imagine that the products of either A or B mechanisms are the same and therefore would have the same energy. We can just put them here halfway on the G scale of our reaction diagram. The products are different for each of the avenues but they're pretty similar in energy and so for simplicity's sake we're going to say they're about the same over here. So we've got our reactants our products. And really the big difference between these two pathways is the stability of the carbocation intermediate. And so for pathway A, we said in the previous video that a primary carbocation is relatively unstable. We'll put it high in energy. While the tertiary carbocation intermediate is more stable. So we'll put it lower in energy. Now when we connect these different components of the reaction together, we'll see that each has some sort of activation energy required to hop from one component to the other. So from reactants to a primary intermediate, I have to um, overcome an activation energy. And from intermediate down to products, I have to overcome a second activation energy. And the same is true if I move through reaction pathway B to the tertiary carbocation and down to products. Okay. So what we've described here is we've got a primary intermediate shown in red in the middle, a tertiary carbocation intermediate shown in green. Each of these transitions from reactants to intermediates or from intermediates to products have to go through a high energy transition state which I'll label as TS. Sometimes you see these as double daggers. And there are transition states as we move from intermediates to products. Now if we look at this reaction in the reaction diagram we can see that it, this occurs in two steps. First, reactions are converted to the intermediate, and in the second step, intermediates are converted to products. And looking at the relative activation energies on this chart, you can see that the activation energy to move to the intermediate, the difference between the reactants and these first transition states, that difference in energy is much higher than the difference from an intermediate to the next transition state. And so of this two steps reaction, we'd say, well, the first step is more difficult. And actually this first step we would call the rate limiting step for the reaction. It doesn't matter really how fast the second step is. It's just faster than the first step. And so if we wanted to influence the overall rate of the entire reaction, we really need to influence the rate limiting step, the first step. Okay. Now, what we said earlier is that this tertiary intermediate is more stable than the primary intermediate. And I've written a reaction diagram that shows those differences. But what I've also done is made guesses as to what these transition state energies are like. And Hammond's postulate says, really for an endergonic reaction, here's an endergonic reaction as we move from a low energy reactants to high energy intermediates, Hammond's postulate says, says that the transition state is probably a lot like the intermediate. And therefore, if the intermediate is lower in energy, the corresponding transition state leading to that intermediate is lower in energy. And so since the primary intermediate is less stable than the tertiary, I've indicated that the transition state leading to that primary intermediate is also less stable. And this really illustrates why we would end up with this tertiary alkyl halide as the major product. The activation energy leading through pathway B and the tertiary carbocation has a lower activation energy. 
and therefore this reaction pathway in green is just faster. If you imagine this as a competition between reactions A and reaction B, they're both occurring at the same time. It's just, it's more likely for this high energy transition state to be achieved with reaction B, and so this occurs much more quickly. And therefore we get an accumulation of reaction B's product, the tertiary alkyl halide.